another simple electronics kit from China. This time what we've got here is a single board power amplifier. So this is using this uh, strange looking chip, the TDA7297. So this is a self-contained two channel uh, 15 watt, I think it is, 15 watt amplifier, stereo amplifier. And uh, it doesn't need many components to support it. So in this kit we have this PCB and then we have four capacitors. I think these are ceramic ones and these are, no, maybe they're tantalum, I'm not sure. Um, and these are electrolytic. And then there's a couple of resistors. There's a diode here as well. And basically that's it. That's all the components you get in this kit. Now, um, I looked around to see if I could find the circuit diagram for this. There doesn't seem to be anything on the site where I got it from. So what I did is I reverse engineered the board uh, using the big Clive technique of photographing the top and the bottom of the board and then in some software I superimposed them and um, I'll put it up here on, on the frame so you can you can see the result but it's quite nice makes it quite easy to to figure out what's happening on the board and what I discovered is it looks very much like one of the examples that uh, is given to you in the data sheet for the TDA7297. So if I just show you that. So this is page five of the data sheet and what you can see is, so this, this is basically the circuit that they've that they've reproduced using this PCB. Um, so what gave me the clue was this bit here. So you've got two 47k resistors in a resistive divider and the 10 microfarad capacitor across it, which is exactly what you have on the board here. The, um, and also the 0.22 microfarad uh, capacitors on the inputs, the audio inputs of the amplifier is exactly what we've got there. Where the differences are is they've gone cheap on us there and uh, lost one of the power supply capacitors, the 100 nanofarad, and they've downgraded the 470 microfarad to 100 microfarad. Um, so they've they've reduced by one component there. But they also put in this diode, a protection diode, in the plus 12 volt line. So presumably that's to stop you from accidentally connecting it, connecting the power supply backwards and damaging the chip. Um, the other thing that you notice when you're looking at how this board makes sense is they've got a thing here marked JX which is a link, so that's just a wire link that connects from pin 3 to pin 13 of the TDA7297. And that's to connect the two VCC pins of the chip to 12 volts. So on the circuit diagram here, you can see they've got pin 3 and pin 13 tied to plus 12 volts. So they do that with a link here. So it's it's a very simple PCB and there's not very many components so it won't take very long to build this up. So um, what I'm going to build, um, I'm going to build that up and I'm going to connect it to a subwoofer that I was that I was given and because um, I've had had an idea for a while to make a low frequency amplifier so I'll connect this to the to the subwoofer and then I'll make a low pass filter to connect to the input and um, I'll do some testing to see if it makes a you know a really good setup for playing low frequencies okay so let's give that a go 
First of all, we'll put the, the flatter components in. So I'm going to put a bit of wire in for the JX jumper there. And let's put the two resistors in. 47k. Make them put them around the right way. Uh, it doesn't really matter, of course, which way around you put resistors, but it's nice if the color bands are facing in the same direction, it makes it look like you knew what you were doing. Okay, and the diode's flat as well, so we'll stick the diode in also. sure it lines up the right way like it is on the board. There, so we've got a few things to solder in. We'll just stick it down a bit with some white tack. this solder. There's something up with this solder. Yeah, it's better. quite like these uh, through hole type kits like the um, more old-fashioned things I've done a few of these um, surface mount ones but everything's so small and fiddly and I wear glasses so sometimes difficult to see what you're doing when everything's so tiny. So I quite like these old style kits. So those joints don't look too bad. We'll go on to the next bit. Uh, I think I'll put the electrolytic caps in. So these ones, very important that you get the minus side correctly located on the board. The, it's quite nice, the silk screen on this. PCB, it's all very clearly marked out so you can't really go wrong. You just have to get the white stripe on the capacitor 
on the negative side and the smaller cap Okay, there's the caps in place. That one's sticking up a bit. Don't really like that. Let's give that give that a push. Well there we go. Melt the solder a bit and give it a push through to make it sit flat. I'm happier if they sit flat on the board. Next, I think these little uh, tantalum caps, so these go on the input to the amplifier. Let's get those in. sure if these are tantalum actually I remember uh, f putting in tantalum capacitors before and they were actually polarized so they had to go a particular way around but these don't have any particular markings on them they just say 224 which is the 22,000 nanofarads is it I'm not sure Two hundred and twenty thousand nanofarads, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, so that's all I need to do for that, except for the chip itself. So the way this is set up, um, you normally have this mounted. I'm getting the legs in the in all the holes. Yeah, so it's got the two two rows of legs. You normally mount it at the edge like this, so that you've got the metal heat sink to the outside, because that allows you to put a screw through that mounting mounting hole and and screw it onto a aluminium plate or a heat sink or the inside of the box if you've got a metal 
box that your amplifier is going to go inside because typically if you're going to run this really hard uh, this this much metal is not enough to dissipate the heat so it needs to be connected to a heat sink so we're going to have to think about a heat sink for the final final thing So for these type of multi-leg things what I normally do is I just kind of put a bit of solder on one pin so you choose one of the corner pins and solder that and then just make sure it's standing up properly where you where you want it make sure it's properly aligned before you solder any more pins because it's quite easy to unsolder one pin but once you've done two or three or all of them you find it's almost impossible to unsolder it again and then you're stuck that looks all right I think that'll do. I'll just put some solder on all the rest of the pins now. actually four pins on here that don't need any solder because there are some pins on this package that are no connection so that so they don't have any function and you don't need to solder them to anything So that's all of the pins soldered and all the components are in place. I think what I might do, if you remember on the data sheet that we looked at, there was a, a missing capacitor on this circuit. So where this big electrolytic is, there was, there was another 100 nanofarad capacitor in parallel. And I think what I might do now is actually go through my bits box and find another 100 nanofarad and just kind of bodge it on the back there so that we have the same circuit diagram that they that they've got in the data sheet here we are this is a 100 nanofarad capacitor so I'm not sure what that came out of but I you can faintly see the writing on it but I checked it with my multimeter it's useful to have a multimeter that can do um, capacitance measurement because capacitors tend to be absolutely the worst for um, for markings or la lack of markings so I'm going to tack that on the back there
Put some solder in there. I think that's all right. Yeah, that's making contact. Okay, so we've got 100 nanofarad in parallel with the electrolytic. So all we need to do now, strap it to a heat sink, connect up the speakers to the edges there. I think I'm only going to use the one channel actually. Just connect up the one channel. And then we need the power connected. Um, and the, the power is a bit of a puzzle on this board because you've got this one called uh, minus 12 volts here which has a little earth symbol next to it and then you've got one that says ground which has got an earth symbol. So if you look back at the circuit diagram from the data sheet what you see is they have pin 9 which is marked S ground, signal ground and then they have pin 8 which is marked PW ground, power ground. But in fact, you can connect those together. So some things, some op amps and amplifiers that use sort of op amp techniques, sometimes they need split rail power supplies, you know, so that means you've got a plus 12 volts and you've got a minus 12 volts and then you've got ground, which is in the middle. But the way that I understand it is the TDA7297 is not like that. So you can connect the signal ground to the power ground. And um, so I think the intention on this little circuit board is that the two grounds are going to be connected together. And that will be both the ground for the incoming audio, the left channel and right channel, and it'll be the ground for the power supply as well. But we can try it and uh, and see whether it works. And if it doesn't, well, this only, only cost uh, 80 pence, I think. So, um, so it won't be much of a loss. So we'll connect some wires and I'll find a heat sink. And we'll go from there. I've attached some wires to the module now. So we've got the wire link here so that's connecting the two grounds as I was just describing uh, so we got the the power line so we've got red and black wires going to the plus 12 volts and one of the ground pins uh, I've got a copper wire there that I've put in for the input so so I can test I can put some audio in by connecting to that wire there and these are the speaker wires. So I'm just using, I'm going to be using the one channel. So I've just used out one and I've got some, some old mains wires here that were surplus and they, they make quite good speaker wires because it's quite, quite thick wire. And if you've got wire with multiple strands, that's better for, for uh, loudspeakers. I've got a heat sink here. So this is a heat sink from a laptop and uh, it seems to be made out of die cast metal. I don't think this is aluminium. feels like die cast. So I've drilled an extra hole in here and I'm going to use that to mount the power amplifier. Not sure which, which way around. I don't really know how this is going to end up mounted. Maybe I'll put this inside the speaker box. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. But this is going to need a heat sink, so I'll attach it to here. I've also got a little input socket here, which was stripped out of something, so phono input. And I've got some, uh, some screened wire there that I'll use for input. But there's still a missing component here, which is the uh, amplifier. So I, so I want to have a, a preamp stage using an op amp, which is also doing um, low pass because the intention for this is for it to be a, a subwoofer and um, so to not handle the, the high frequencies really. So uh, let me attach the heat sink and we can go from there. 
I've got some thermal paste here, so I'm going to put a bit of thermal paste on the heat sink. This uh, makes sure that you can tra transfer the heat efficiently between the the heat sink and the and the chip. Do that nice and tight so that's not going anywhere. It's a little bit, little bit wonky there. Let's put it straight. There we go. So that's enough to be able to actually test the thing now. So I've got all the necessary wires, I've got the thing mounted on a heat sink. So now all I need to do is connect it to the speaker, which I'll show you in a sec, and uh, power it and find some input so that we can uh, hear some audio going to the speaker. So this is the speaker that I'm going to be using. So this is a subwoofer that com comes from one of those uh, kind of inexpensive sets of uh, PC surround speakers. So this, this came off a, um, a neighbor's PC and he's very kindly given this to me. So, and to give you some idea of scale, there you go, that's 15 centimeters, a 15 centimeter ruler there. So that's what I'm gonna connect up. This is gonna be my subwoofer. Right, we'll have the first switch on. So I've got my bench power supply set for 12 volts. So I've uh, got my speakers temporarily connected here with some, some sticky tape, some uh, insulating tape. I'll just finally check, make sure that the red is plus 12 volts and the black is going to ground. And then we'll connect it up. hear any sound from the speakers. Ah, there we go. So the input is picking up hum from my finger. So that's good, the amp is working. It's not hot. Um, so I'll find a test signal to put in here. We can try it with a test tone. <laughs> 